In this video, we're going to talk about the differences and applications of ruled surfaces and extend surface. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to cover the differences between ruled surface and the extend surface tool inside of Fusion 360. Now we're going to create a couple of our own files, but we're also going to be using the one you see on the screen here, controller split. So if you want to follow along, you can go to the description and you can download this data set. This data set has a form body that was used to create a controller of in this case, just a video game controller shape, and it has a solid body and a couple surfaces. And we'll talk about the reason for that in a little bit. But to get started, we first want to create some of our own surfaces so we can understand what the ruled and extend surface tools do. So we're gonna get started by creating a sketch. Just pick any plane, grab a spline tool, and just make something that has some shape to it. We're then going to go to our surface tools, use extrude, and just simply pull it out a certain distance. It doesn't really matter what, but we'll make it symmetric and say okay. Now, when you're dealing with surfaces, we often think of surfaces as being complex shapes, and that's not necessarily true. They can be planar in nature, and they can also have things like filleted corners. But there are some tools that behave differently depending on what the surface input is. One of these tools is going to be the ruled surface tool. So what we want to do is we want to talk about the difference and application between ruled and between the extend tool. So first, let's go to create and take a look at ruled. Now the ruled surface tool will have a couple of different options for us in terms of its type. We have direction, we have tangent, and we have normal. Let's first start with our normal option and we're gonna use the chain selection, which is gonna grab our entire boundary. If we begin to pull this out, you'll notice at some point it's gonna fail and that's based on the radius of curvature that we have here. If we pull it back the other direction, you can see we can get a bit further because this curve here is a little bit tighter than this one. But this tool in general is going to take whatever the curvature is at our selected edge, and it's gonna go 90 degrees to that. We do have an option to modify the angle. For instance, we can make it plus or minus a certain amount. And you'll notice that when we do that, the corners begin to get a little bit interesting. We've got some rounded corners here. And if we turn on mitered corner, it'll create those square corners for us. This is a benefit because it allows us to come back and add a fillet to that corner if we wish. Now, this is not the only option that we have for creating a ruled surface. So I'm gonna say, okay, go to my bodies folder and I'm gonna hide the ruled surface and I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna select this and this time, instead of using normal, we're gonna use tangent. I'm gonna begin pulling this out. And once again, you'll notice that the corners are sort of filling themselves in. If we try to miter these corners, you'll notice that it does create that squared edge and that's only because we have a taper angle here. If we set that to zero, we'll likely get a warning and we'll need to turn off the mitered corner option. So if you are using something like a tangent extension and you do want to have an angle, let's say 15 degrees, then you have to consider whether or not you want that mitered corner to have that sharp crease there that you can come back and take care of later on your own. So the tangent option allows us to take the curvature direction of the surface and in this case, it allows to extend that out a certain amount with or without an additional angle. So we're gonna hide this one and we're gonna do the ruled surface one more time. We're gonna select it and now we're gonna talk about the option for direction. Now the direction one is extremely handy, especially when you're creating things like lips on complex shapes. I'm gonna take away this angle and I'm gonna just drag this arrow down. And you can see what we can do here is we can sort of extend the surface out. Keep in mind that the direction is going to be based on a plane in this case or an axis that we give it, which means that if you try to select a plane such as the XZ plane, it's going to produce problems based on our edge selection. These edges up here aren't going to produce any results. So we do need to make sure that our direction is going to make sense for the geometry we're trying to create. One thing that you will notice here is that we can use an angle. For example, we could put three plus or minus degrees. If we need to add draft, we can also toggle on or off mitered corners, but you'll notice something interesting happens in this case. When we do this, you'll notice that the corners are now disjointed. The distance from our selected edge is going to be based on the direction we're traveling in that taper. However, you'll notice unlike things like normal or tangent, it's not a consistent thickness all the way around. 
So if you're gonna use this option, it's best to come back with something like a sketch. We can take the original sketch, project it with P on the keyboard, and we can offset that original sketch. What this allows us to do is offset it the amount we want, and we can use that as a trim tool. Now, if you use the trim tool before, you might know that it's not going to like the fact that this edge doesn't extend all the way. I try to use that as a trim tool. You can see that it is automatically extending it out here, but it's not going to intersect this face over here. In a situation like this, we would wanna use something like split body. We could split the body, the splitting tool will still be the sketch, but it's going to extend out and allow us to split everything. This means we can go back with the delete tool, just selecting our faces that we wanna get rid of and just simply select delete. So once again, that's a pretty handy tool and it allows us to take some complex geometry and make some complex shapes. However, we also wanna talk about the fact that we are going to understand that we have another tool that does something very similar and that's extend. There are a couple of differences here. For example, the extend option has natural, perpendicular, and tangent. The other ones we had were essentially normal or perpendicular, tangent, and direction. So we have three different options here. Two of them are essentially the same, perpendicular and tangent, but they do come with some additional options. In addition to that, when we use extend, extend is not going to, in this case, create a new surface. It's going to add to the surface that we have selected. So unlike using the ruled surface where we got a new surface body that we could decide to trim or stitch together or do whatever we wanted to, in this case, this is going to add to our existing surface. We do have align and free edge options depending on the curvature that you're using. And if we change from natural to tangent, you'll see that we get some very similar results. However, the tangency is dividing these surfaces up. Now this is important because as we get into creating other surfaces like lofts and patches from these extensions, we wanna make sure that we have the cleanest version possible. So for a part like this, I would typically default to going to a natural extension. It'll keep my nice square corners. And if I say, okay, you'll notice that now I've got one single face selection. You'll notice also with the edges that we have one single edge on each side. It's not disjointed like it would be with the tangent option. With the ruled surface, once again, we can use this to create the normal or perpendicular option, but it does have limitations. And once again, when we do this, it is adding it to our current surface. So if you wanted to do additional work on these, you would have to use unstitch and you would have to unstitch them from the rest of the body. So it's not ideal, but there are some instances where you might use one over another. That's as far as we're gonna take the basics of terms of understanding ruled versus the extend. And now we're gonna take a look at an application. Now this design here was created as a form body. And inside the form body, I have a single form body and I have a secondary form body that's a copy of it. Now, oftentimes when I'm creating designs like this, I will make copies at the form body level and I might export one as a solid and export another as a surface. So in this case, what I did was I unstitched the version that was the surface, and then I stitched the top and the bottom back together. This leaves me with a top and a bottom. And then what I did was I took the projection of its edge and I created an extrude surface that's going to be our parting line. So this all gets us to our first point as to why we would use one of the tools ruled over extend and what are the cases where we might make the decision to use one over the other. Well, in a case like this, if I'm working with a surface, in this case, the top of the controller as a surface body, I would decide to start by creating a trim. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna copy and paste that parting surface because I'm gonna need it again in just a little bit. So what I would do is I would use the trim tool and the trim tool, I'm gonna to use my controller top, and then I wanna get rid of the outside section of the controller. This leaves me with an inside piece here. Now, if you stitch these two together, you'll have a solid body, but that's not exactly what we wanna do. What we wanna do is we wanna use the ruled surface. So I'm gonna say ruled surface. I'm gonna take that edge, and I want it to go down to a direction, in this case, in the Z direction, or down to the XY plane. So we wanna make sure that once again, we select the correct plane. It can be hard based on your angle. And I'm just gonna take it down a distance of two millimeters and I'm gonna take away the draft. I'm gonna leave it at zero degrees and say, okay. 
I'm gonna hide the controller top and I wanna bring back that parting surface. So what we've done here is we've essentially built a rim that exactly matches our parting surface or the controller shape. And now we can do things like offset that. We can take this surface and we can offset it in a distance of one or two millimeters. And then we can hide the original ruled and now we can take this version of the surface and we can trim away the rest of the controller. Now here's where a case makes sense to use extend as opposed to using ruled. Part of our surface extends through here, but part of it doesn't. So by using the extend tool and allowing it to grab everything, we can say natural, we can allow it to pull up until we go all the way through that surface, and then we can use it as a trim tool. So now I wanna trim away the inside of this surface, and this leaves me with this outside lip here that allows me to start building out things like a reveal or potentially by creating a lip and groove feature. So what I wanna do is I wanna bring back the controller top and see that we now have that perfectly flat, the extruded surface we used as a parting tool, and we've offset it based on the geometry. Now, there are some nuances here, some things that we should be aware of, things like the distance between the edge that we offset. When we're using offset, we wanna make sure that that is a consistent distance, especially if you're designing a part. But here's another thing that we should always consider. Just because we have surfacing tools, are those going to be the best options for us? Now, in some cases they are, they are going to be the best option, but there are other times where we might decide to go down this path of using surface tools when there's usually an easier solution. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring back the parting surface and the controller solid body. What I'm gonna do is move back to my solid tools, select the controller solid, and I'm gonna shell that. I'm gonna say two millimeters and say, okay. Now by shelling that, if I go to inspect and section analysis, you can see that we've created a thin wall part. That thin wall part has that two millimeter wall thickness that we're looking for. And because I didn't select any external faces, I selected the entire solid, it's going to leave it as one single solid body with no external openings. So you wouldn't know otherwise that it was shelled out. But now we can use our parting surface for split body. We wanna split this body, we wanna use this surface as our splitting tool, and we can say, okay. Now, if we hide the controller, you can see that we've got this thin walled part. We've got that two millimeter thick section, just like we did before using the ruled surface and the offset and the trims. And essentially it gives us the same exact result. So when we, when we took a look at our results, you can see that we had to use these extend surfaces, these ruled surfaces, all to get this feature right here. Now, these two solids and surfaces are not exactly the same because one of them had a crease on it for the parting line and the other didn't. So you will notice that there is a slight offset difference here, but the workflow is still the same. You just simply need to determine which workflow is best for what you're doing and decide whether or not that's a surface tool or if there's some sort of combination of a solid tool that makes sense. This is gonna take a lot of seat time to figure out because there are always going to be cases where you make a design decision and you have to backtrack and decide whether or not that was the correct design decision. In a lot of cases for making something like a reveal here, you might be able to use a sweep cut as a solid tool, or you might need to go back and use things like offset surface and ruled surface in order to create the surface body to cut away the section that you need as a lip and groove or a reveal feature. It really depends on your geometry and your workflow, but in most cases, you'll find that solid tools can oftentimes produce the same or very similar results as a combination of surface tools. So in this instance, I would likely go to a shell and then I would go to a split body as opposed to doing things like a surface trim, a ruled surface, an extend surface, and trimming those surfaces away. So it's a lot of extra work to do it with surfaces when you could achieve the same result with a solid. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. If you have any ideas for surfacing videos or complex geometry you wanna see, let me know that as well. And if you wanna join the Discord server, send me an email, support at caducator.com. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.